Hi guys! This week we are going to be reading this really amazing story called Wangari's Trees of Peace, a true story from Africa. While we're reading the story, I want us to focus on identifying and finding the central idea of the story and the key details. If you remember, the central idea is what the text is mostly about. And the details, like scoops of ice cream, are the smaller ideas. They're gonna tell us more about the central idea. Before we start the story though, here are some great vocabulary words that you might hear in the story. The first one is haul, which means to pull or carry. As you can see, these women from Africa are hauling things on their heads or babies on their back. The next word is barren. Barren means not able to produce many plants. If you can see this land, there's nothing growing. It is barren. Seedling is a young tree or plant grown from a seed. So it's like a baby little plant. Earnings is payment for work done. Village is a small town or community often in the country. So I want you to listen to uh, for those words in our story. Wangari's Tree of Peace, a true story from Africa by Jeanette Winter. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mom go to gather firewood for cooking. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugar cane, and maize from the rich soil. Wangari shines in school. And when she grows tall, like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America. Six years later, her studies over, Wangari returns to her Kenya home and sees a change. What has happened? She wonders, where are the trees? Wangari sees women bent from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees barren land where no crops grow. And where are the birds? Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. Will all of Kenya become a desert? She wonders as her tears fall. Wangari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard, one tree at a time. She starts by planting nine seedlings. So if you remember from the vocabulary, seedlings are the baby plants. So there they are in the picture. They're really small little trees. Watching the seedlings take root gives Wangari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery. In an open space, she plants row after row of the tiny trees. Next, Wangari convinces the village women that planting trees is a good thing. She gives each one a seedling. Our lives will be better. When we have trees again, you'll see we are planting the seeds of hope. The women spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows, like a green belt stretching over the land. The government men laugh. Hmm, I wonder why they're laughing. Women can't do this, they say. It takes trained foresters to plant trees. The women ignored the laughter 
and kept planting. Wangari pays them a small amount for each seedling still living after three months, their first earnings ever. So the first time these women have ever made any money was by helping Wangari take care of the seedlings. Word travels like wind rushing through leaves about the green returning to Wangari's village. Soon other women in other villages and towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. But the cutting continues. Wangari Wangari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees still remaining. We need a park more than we need an office tower, she said. She's very brave. The government men disagreed. Wangari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker and put her in jail. And still, she stands tall. Right is right, she said, even if you're alone. But Wangari is not alone. Talk of the trees spread all over Africa, like ripples in Lake Victoria. More women hear the talk and plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. The seedlings take root and grow tall until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. Look at the land, it's not barren anymore. It has trees growing on it. The umbrella of Kenya, I'm sorry, let me go back. The umbrella of green in Kenya returns. Women walk tall, their backs straight, for now they can gather firewood closer to home. The land is no longer barren. Sweet potatoes, sugarcane, and maize grow again in the rich red earth. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees and of her army of women who planted them. And if you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below and the green Wangari brought back to Africa. The end. So I want you to think about what was this story all about? What was its central idea? And what were some key details? Tomorrow, we are gonna take a closer look and we're gonna figure those out. Bye guys.